We're both going to Florida this week, which made me think of just traveling in places. Yeah. And, well, like, you guys have traveled kind of a lot, right? It, I mean, it depends what you, what you mean by a lot. So what's your favorite about? place where they've traveled? Favorite place? Well, I mean, the uh, our honeymoon was to the DR. And oh, I yeah. Mean, that was the first time I'd been out of the country. And mm-hmm. It was an all-inclusive resort. And it was our honeymoon. Yeah, so, that's you know, kind of top. That was that was pretty good. Mm-hmm. Um, Japan was pretty sweet. That's probably top of the list, just because it was it was Okinawa, so it wasn't even like Tokyo. It was like the the boondocks of Japan, mm. and and that was that's probably yeah, that's probably top of the list. Yeah, just because it's so different. Yeah, me and my husband talk about this with different couples a lot because we discovered that I don't know if it was as we got older or just as we like went to different places. Or maybe it's because I was pregnant. And a lot of the times that I've been to like a uh, ocean beach, I've yeah. been pregnant and maybe that's a, a factor, but I am more of a like cabin on a lake kind of girl oh, yeah. instead of a ocean beach person. Oh yeah, I but would I'm too. very excited. You are too. Yeah, okay, that was my next question. Lake cottage somewhere in Michigan every okay. every year for a week and spend yeah. the week fishing and skiing and tubing. Yeah. I also don't like I don't like the salt water. Like the taste of it or? I feel like I dry out. Maybe that's not, I don't know if other people feel that way. Joe's nodding her head. Yes. Yeah. I like lake water better. It Probably smells lake worse. It's objectively better. It, well, it's not it's salty. Like that's, it's not yeah, salty. Well, yeah. yeah, that yeah. Grimy, There's less <laughs> things that can kill you in the water for the most part, depending on where you're going. I mean, there's the, the jellyfish. currents are worse. Yeah, yeah but. There's, there's the undertow. Now I'm having, I've watched Finding Dory so many times <laughs> in my last month. No, You've not I, seen that movie? I have. It's just, I, you know, not multiple times over the last week. Oh, I watch it too much. I watch too many kids shows too much. Your kids don't, but you do. Yeah. yeah they're not even watching it. Like I have things on and they're just like doing their own thing, trying to kill each other. Yeah. You know, and I'm like trying to prevent them from killing each other. But also then I'm like, hmm, this is a good movie. <laughs> so... I don't know. Thanks for joining us on the Clarify Podcast, where Kelsey and Ben answer any questions that you, the congregation, have texted in. Do you have questions? Are you confused? Let us clarify. So we didn't have church this week, obviously. Uh, Jim's recording his sermon. We already uh, announced that in the email, or I, I think Andy sent a later email, that he's going to record his sermon actually later today here uh, and, and release that. So if anybody wants to send in any questions from from Jim's sermon, uh, we'll throw that. I mean, it's the same number every week, so you should have it saved. But we can throw that. Jesse, you will throw that on there, and uh, feel free to text any questions about Jim's sermon video too. But for this week, we're going to answer a couple of questions that we've uh, been sitting on for a little while. Uh, this one came from, I think, when we were talking about Abraham, if I if I remember right. Yes. We've got a question here that says, is there any indication that people aged at a different rate than we do now? If they were still having children after being hundreds of years old, they clearly had some vitality left. Yes. So this is would be like pre-flood Genesis. Yeah. Where they're going through the generations, and so-and-so was this age when they had this person, and then they mm-hmm. lived to be this many years, and then they died. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I would say that that prob- probably is the an indication. Like, I don't know if this person's asking about, like, scientific evidence that that's the case, but I don't know yeah, if that's know. any of that's out there. But, yeah, I mean, if you're right. If they're having kids at... I don't know. I didn't look at who the oldest. I mean, Abraham was a hundred when uh, Isaac was but born. But Abraham is post flood. But even he was a hundred. So I mean, like, if some lady popped out a, a kid at a hundred today, we'd be like, "Holy cow! What on earth?" So something else is happening, and I, I we don't know why. Well, I mean, that's we're talking you know, thousands, like six thousand or so years ago that the flood was. So this would be before the flood. I mean, not to get on to your specific dates, but we're talking thousands of years ago where we don't really have. I mean, I don't. I, I didn't really look into the scientific stuff because mm-hmm. I didn't take that as that's what this person wanted. Maybe they mm-hmm. did, um, and maybe there's some stuff out there. I don't know. But yeah. I mean, it, again, kind of comes back to like, are we going to believe the Bible? Are we going to believe what science might be telling us or not telling us? Um, if we believe the Bible and that people were having kids at hundreds of years, I mean, Methuselah, yeah. lived, to, Methuselah lived to be 969 years old. So obviously the aging it, was 
different in in some aspects. Cause and in chapter 5, verse 25, it says Methuselah was 187 before he fathered Lamech. Right. So, yeah, there there is some... I mean, I'm not really sure how they couldn't age differently. Yeah. I mean... Yeah. It's interesting, that's for sure. I think... Yeah. Go do some research on it, because I think that you would be fascinated by what you find. But just make sure that you're putting whatever you find against the word of God. Yeah. Yeah. I've always, you know, it, it would be really interesting to see what, like, what people would be capable of if they lived that long nowadays. I'm like, can you imagine an Elon Musk living 900 years or, like, a Walt Disney or a Edison or a Tesla or just any of those kind of people? Like, what would they be able to do with 900 years? Yeah. I don't know. What to I, say we don't about really that. need to go down the road. I, I just, I, my, my, cause I can, going yeah, and, cause now I'm, you're getting my conspiracy yeah, brain going. And then, yeah, we don't nope, need to do that. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, keep it shut, Kelsey. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. So the next question that we have was written in on four, oh, so April 21st. That would have been the l- last sermon that, the last because sermon. We have, yep. Cause we didn't have yeah. church um, this Sunday. So this person wrote, Ezekiel 1820 says that sons will not pay for the sins of their fathers. David's children paid for his sins, including the death of his baby. And I understand that David's sinfulness um, and passivity as a father affected his children. But why not kill David instead of an innocent baby? This is a great question. I love whoever wrote this in. Like, I love this question because it's it's. It's not like uber deep, but it's a very like reflective question. And it's one of those questions that's not just a straightforward, real easy mm-hmm. answer. I um, mean, there's, we know that the Bible does not contradict itself, but there's times when it seems like it does. And we have mm-hmm. to, if we start with the, with the belief that the Bible doesn't contradict itself, then we have to figure out in these, these passages where there seems to be contradictions, how does it not contradict mm-hmm. if, if we start with that assumption? And so, um, the, the the background of this passage is that it's in the ancient Near East where they don't have an individualistic mentality mm-hmm. like we do in the West today. They're more communal. They think of themselves more as a community unit. And so the the the, the verse that um, is referring to and the verse before it, uh, 1819, says, Yet you say, why should not the son suffer for the iniquity of the father? When the son has done what is just and right and has been careful to observe all my statutes, he shall surely live. The soul who sins shall die. The son shall not suffer for the iniquity of the father, nor the father suffer for the iniquity of the son. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon himself, and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon himself. In the passage, it's talking about a very unrighteous father and a very righteous son. And basically, Ezekiel's going going after the mindset of everybody pays for the sins of each other, basically, because of that communal understanding. Now, we read this and think, well, duh, why would a kid pay for the sins of his father but in that culture it'd be the other way around where they'd be like well that we we are one unit so if one of us sins then we all pay but he's going after this no the righteousness is not a communal thing it's something that is brought on the individual and in our time post jesus it's brought forth by jesus Mm -hmm. um he also so in exodus 34 6 um this is when Um, Moses is up on the mountain with God, um, Yahweh, and he says, um, the Lord passed before him and proclaimed, the Lord, the Lord, a merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness, keeping steadfast love for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, but who will by no means clear the guilty uh, visiting the iniquity of the fathers on the children and the children's children to the third and fourth generation. So is that kind of where they were getting that mentality? Um, I mean, maybe, but I mean, it's the just the entire cultural mindset. Yeah. It's not just a biblical thing. It's, okay. I mean, to this day, the Middle East and um, Eastern culture is very communal, while yeah. the West is more individualistic. And we just, we can't really fully understand that because we we are individualistic, so we yeah. can't really understand that communal aspect of culture. And I like I like the 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 term the terms that they used in the question of David's children paying for his sins. Mm-hmm. Um, that's not quite what it says in that verse, but I like I like that I, I like that wording because I think we asked the question then: it is David's son who dies with this with you know the whole thing with Bathsheba? 
Is he paying for David's sin? No. Jesus is the one that pays for our sin. And even though that's beforehand, everything centers around the cross. So Jesus is paying for David's sin. Jesus is paying for your sin. Jesus is paying for my sin. That doesn't mean that that you know the sons or that nobody else ever has ever suffers the result like physically the natural of consequences the, yes, in this world of, of a sin. Now I understand. Now in the question, yeah, it does seem like David sins and so God slays his son, and that's what it kind of seems like. But it's not that the child is paying for David's sin; it's that God is judging David, and that's the result of it. Yes, hmm. but I think that sounded better in my head. I think that the person that's writing the question isn't using pays for in like the ter- in in the sense of atonement. Oh, I know they're not. I, I'm think, saying, I think that's why I like how it's written because that is the case. Right. Okay. David's son is not giving David righteousness because he paid for David's sin. Right. So I brought up the Exodus passage to kind of show like where it talks about like God's justice in two different ways in the Old Testament. Yeah. Right. Like. And I don't think that they contradict each other. I think what you're saying is true that like there are consequences in this life when we, and sometimes we can't because the, the automatic second question that me as a mother is going to ask is, okay, so if I lose a baby, did I do something Mm. that I didn't know that I did that I, you know, and now am I paying for that and as a, as a natural consequence of my sin here? And I think that um, we don't get to know all those answers. I think this specific instance, God reveals to us right. what happened, but that's not the case for all of us. Like, right. yes, we live in a fallen world and there is sin all over, but you can't attribute terrible, tragic things that happen in life to something that you personally did all of the time. Um, there are instances all, the all of the time. There are instances where you can. You right. can see a direct correlation. You made this bad choice, and this is the result of right. that. But when something tragic like that, unexplainable happens, it's not a blanket rule for all of humanity. Because right. there's a there's another, and I didn't look it up, but I remember this. There's a story um, from the New Testament where um, there's was it a blind person? I, I don't know what you're referring. <sighs> where. The religious leaders and the people in the community were like, what sin did this pe- person's parents commit yeah. or did he commit to cause him to have this tragedy? And Jesus basically like, neither one neither one is the case. Right. You know, this person has this ailment so that I can be glorified and now right. he's healed. You know, so we don't get, and it happens all over the Bible, like with Hagar and the miracles that happened there with Job. Like, we don't get to know all of the reasons why things happen in right. regular life. Right. And so to ask, why would God not kill David? Like, we would think that that's justice. But we know that God is just, but his wisdom is higher than ours. Well, I think, and I think that's really what the heart of this yeah. question is, is why, regardless of, like, this passage, I mean, well, well with that in mind, why would, why would God— Kill the baby instead mm-hmm. of just killing David, and there's uh, there's not a good answer to that because no. I mean there's there's plenty of times in the Bible where it's you know like uh, Uzzah tries to catch the uh, Ark of the Covenant as it's, as it's falling off the cart and is struck down dead on the spot, mm-hmm. and there's other times where people aren't struck dead on the spot, and there's you know there's there's times in our minds that seem like much smaller things and things like this seems like a pretty big deal, you know, mm-hmm. for everything that has happened. You know, it's not just the sin with Bathsheba. She, he then kills her husband. Like this is a big deal, mm-hmm. uh, at least in our minds. And so why would God take, take that out on the child instead of David, you know, from a like theological standpoint, like we just don't, we just don't know. There, there isn't a great answer to that, but God obviously had much more in store for David. Um, Solomon comes through Bathsheba. Mm-hmm. Like there's there's much more that happens after this part of the story. And so God had a plan for the rest of the life of David. He didn't have a plan or he had not that he like passively didn't have a plan, but he what people that were struck down and, and killed, they didn't have a future. Like there was nothing more to their life. It gets us into the whole predestination. Yeah, we're not going there. I know <laughs> we can't go there. We don't have the time to go there, but that's really what it comes down to and um and 
uh, I'm thinking David, he calls David, God does a man over after his own heart. Right. And David in the Psalms struggles with God over tons and tons of stuff, but he always comes back to, and I will trust you because you are good right. and you are high above, your ways are above my ways. I can't mm-hmm. even begin to understand. Right. And um, yeah, and he's blessed over and over in the end. Right. So. And so I think, I think basically this comes down to, you know, in Ezekiel, these are the words of God and God is saying that I'm not going to go after the child or any, I'm not going to go after somebody else for a mistake that this person makes. But that doesn't mean that in a fallen world that there are no results that go out to other people. And I know this this kind of blurs that line because yeah. it seems like God is kind of going after the, the kid for the, the sins of David. But it's it's the result of, of David's sin. But also, like, at, at the, the great judge, white throne judgment, like, we're only responsible for ourselves in the end. And right. if our name is written in the book, and Jesus takes all of that. Right. And so, like, things, things, sins that I commit are not going to be listed under my daughter's record. Exactly. You know, yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, at the very end of it, right. like, that's that's how it works. <laughs> yeah. And that's why we all need the blood of the Lamb. Because mm-hmm. it's, we're very much hopeless without it. And we commit sins that would put some people in the Bible to shame. Um, and And also, like... We can, when we don't understand, we just had, um, last Wednesday night, we just had a, a faithful, like faithful, what do we call it? We had a worship service. The, this is my story This night. is my story night. Yeah. And it was people sharing their stories of the faithfulness of God. Yeah. And, um, like the whole story of the Bible is, uh, God's people mm-hmm. yeah. screwing it up yep. and God fixing it and figuring it out. And there are still consequences, but he moves forward not without Israel or without um, in the New Testament, without hit, uh, the Christians, yeah. but with us. So it's like every time we can think, oh, I don't understand why this is happening or why like this doesn't seem fair or just God, Like I'm reminded to look back on where he was faithful. And when I don't know, to look forward to him and not to the uncertainty that I, because I don't understand. So. Right. And I'm just going to leave this thought to hang because yeah. I just had it right now. Great. From our perspective, that that is suffering for the child. Mm-hmm. From the child's perspective, I don't know if it is. Being with Jesus. Exactly. Yeah, so mm-hmm. we'll leave it. We'll leave it on that thought. So thanks uh, for tuning in this week again, and uh, catch you again next week. <laughs>